So we all have those friends, a lot of them, I'm sure, that we like to support with all of their endeavors and their things in life, right? And a lot of those friends have spent quite a bit of time doing things with MLMs, right? Like you have your Lula Rose and your Dot Dot Smiles and your lots of other things. You get it. And I've been there too. I've done the things. They're, they're, they're doing the thing and I buy the thing and support the thing because they're my friends and I love them. But, you know, sometimes the thing that they're, they're, they're involved in really doesn't match with your life and, you know, you don't know what to do with it. Today's video is actually kind of a redemption day in that I'm going to repurpose something that I got from one of my girlfriends to support their MLM and use it in the soap shop. And I'm pretty excited about it, really, if I'm being honest. And I will tell you more about what all of that is in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 340 of 365 days of soap. And today, we are making some bath bombs for the teacher appreciation gift boxes that I give to all the staff members at the girls' school. But in addition to that, we are going to be using a product that I picked up from one of my friends when they were in a certain MLM, and they've moved on to like the fifth one at this point. It's a lot to keep up with, and I am going to be using that with which to paint the bath bombs, because I want to say this thing cost me about 300 bucks when it was all said and done. It is a an airbrush makeup thing. New. You start, you, you do that. Fancy, it's a little bit airbrush kit, right? But I'm not the kind of girl to airbrush my face. That's not a, that's not a skill. I tried, I, I tried, it was bad. It was not a good time. And it ended up being more stressful than makeup already is for me really. And so I used it a couple times and I put it in the back of the cabinet, never to be seen again until I was on the Amazon looking up something and weirdly an airbrushing kit came up for Beth Bombs and I went, I wonder if I can use this. So that's what we're doing today. Yeah, so let's get to the video. We're gonna talk about the bombs that I'm making. We're gonna try the airbrushing process and it's gonna be a good time either way, whether I succeed or fail. So let's go there and see which one it is. Well, Sudzers, today's the day, and that day is called I am going to get use out of a very expensive makeup airbrushing system I bought to support a friend and her MLM endeavors, and um, I I'm going to use it. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to use it better than I was able to use it on my face because I never could get the hang of that guy. But we are making coffee mold did bath bomb things and we are using two cents that i don't exactly like on their own and also for the chai tea especially it's not a good idea to use it on its own because i believe the usage rate for that particular scent from nature's garden is like three percent max or something 
but together with the chocolate fudge and the chai tea, delightful. And so I'm blending that to, to make the scent blend for this. And I am also making this batch a bit more moist than I normally would. And so what I have in this guy is three cups baking soda, two cups citric acid, um, uh, one cup actually arrowroot power powder. I am playing with arrowroot today because why not? It's going to be a good time. And to that, I added a very hefty tablespoon each of water and oil and poly. And then the scent is about one and a half tablespoons in total of the chocolate fudge and the chai tea with more of the chocolate fudge than the chai tea. And again, these scents on their own, I don't super like them. The chocolate fudge is like such a sickly sweet chocolate smell. I hate it, I do not like it. And the chai tea is overly spicy and that mixture is absolutely delightful before the citric acid even goes into it. So I made it with more water or more fluid, more liquid than necessary or than I usually do rather because we are going to be using vacuum seal molds, those vacuum molds. And I don't do a lot with any shaped molds just in general. They're kind of a pain. I feel like they take longer than just making a spherical bath bomb and based on the you know, people asking for help on the soap forums all the time about vacuum molds and the plunger molds and just mold molds in general. I'm thinking that that's actually true, that it's actually easier to master making a spherical bath bomb with the two halves than it is to get your consistency right in one of these decorative mold things. But I got this particular bath bomb mold for the Friends line, I believe. And I think that's all we ever used it for was just that line. And I am making the gift sets for the teachers at my children's school. And I always include a bath bomb in there. But usually I just include, you know, bath bombs and soaps and stuff that I have left over from old, you know, releases. And so like the summer line, whatever bath bombs ended up still there. I, I put those into the gift sets. But this year I'm actually making it all properly themed because I had time to do that guy because I figured out my Christmas line in freaking June this year. So I had time come August. Very exciting, really. And so I thought what better thing to do than make a coffee shaped bath bomb really for them because Whenever I go to parent-teacher conferences, I always bring the teachers a coffee, which is kind of a stressful thing in and of itself, like determining somebody's coffee order at a coffee house when you don't really know anything about them. Like that's way more stressful than one would think. But anyway, that's what I do. And so I thought that I would do this and it gave me an opportunity to use that airbrushing system to paint the bath bombs. Because here's the thing, one of the reasons why I have so much of this chocolate fudge and chai tea left over is because what I just showed you in the in the bath bomb itself. A, they, they smell bad on their own, so you always have to mix them. Two, uh, they discolor. And I am not the type to use that color stabilizer crap for my bath bombs. I, I am not. I am very much of the mindset that the fewer things that you put, that you have to put into any recipe, the better. And so like there are people out there that put 14 different types of, you know, surfactants and crap into their bath bombs or even just like two types of surfactants, anything more than poly 80 in a bath bomb. And I'm like, no, that's a hard pass. What are you doing? Cream of tartar, SCI, SLSA, BTMS, ABC, seriously, just why? That's so much stuff. And so I, again, that color stabilizer to keep everything white, I'm not a fan. I don't use it. And so I figured this is going to discolor anyway. So why not lean into that and 
go ahead and airbrush these bath bombs, fun colors, but also, you know, basically brown. Okay, so these have firmed up for about four hours or so, and you can already see, I mean, I hope you can see, but there is already discoloration going on on a number of these bombs. That's really as quick as it comes. You see that? We've got some brownish, purplish spots going on there. And so yeah, that discoloration, gonna start real early. And so yeah, let's use this cool system and airbrush it. Now, what I did with the solution that I put in here was, you know, mica with rubbing alcohol. And here's the thing. Normally, I don't just use for like a mica paint job thing on bath bombs. I normally don't use just alcohol. I usually mix it with glycerin because I find it actually adheres better and I don't end up with any warts on the finished product. But glycerin was going to be way too thick to actually get through this thing, I think. And also to that, did you notice how I was able to paint one little teeny tiny area before I had to fill that hopper again? That sucks. That is not sustainable. I, I understand that this whole thing stemmed from seeing an airbrush kit, you know, on Amazon that was, that came up in a search, an unrelated search, by the way. But two refills of this thing to do one part of this bath bomb, that's a hard pass for me. That, that's a gnaw for me, dog. So I found this weird little funnel thing. I have no idea where I got it, but I'll be damned if it doesn't fit in the hopper just perfectly. And also it has a bigger area there. Granted, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to use the stylus or whatever that thing is called to do the... The, the painty paint things because there's a thing that's not attached that has liquid in it and I really don't want to spill it. I mean, I don't want to spill it all over the bath bombs. It's not the end of the world if it just spills because it's just a little bit of mica and some rubbing alcohol, but it, it did make holding this a little bit complicated. But as you can see, that hopper is not draining nearly as fast as the last time, so I might be able to get through a couple of these guys before it drains and I have to refill it, which is good. And probably the bigger benefit of getting an airbrush system. And you know what? Those things are not expensive. Like the one that came up was pretty cool. It had its own little compressor, like mini compressor, like air compressor thing that sits on your table or your floor or whatever. It was pretty big and a number of different hoppers and accoutrement, I feel. And it was only like 180 bucks, so that's not bad. But the point is, I already spent doll hairs on this thing that is just taking up space in my bathroom cabinet for no good reason. So why not bring it into the soap shop and it can take up space there? This is my thinking. But to that, I don't know. I think I already broke it because I'm not even pulling back the little the little thing that you're supposed to pull to make the stuff come out and it's already coming out so I think it's broken maybe the mixture is too thin maybe I should actually put some glycerin in it to thicken it up just a little bit you know I don't know actually one of my mods Kaylee also suds are in the discord and one of my favorite humans on the planet. And I know I say that about a lot of people, but you know what? I'm damn lucky to have come in contact with so many amazing humans that I get to have so many favorite people on the planet. And she is one of them. Anyway, she used to decorate cakes with airbrush systems and stuff. And she's probably watching this right now and laughing at me about how bad at it I am. And even me questioning why is it coming out of the thing when I haven't pulled the thing? But honestly, I want to know. Why is it coming out of the tip when I haven't pulled the thing? I I have questions. So, Kaylee, if you could answer that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. But really, this is not bad. And just in case you're wondering, I'm painting the little sleeve on a coffee cup brown because Cutter's Point is a very popular coffee, like local coffee house around here. And 
I feel like the teachers usually get gift cards to Cutters Point during the teacher appreciation thing. So it all sort of like feathers in very nicely with each other. And the part that I'm painting blue right now, I was going to keep white, but I'm a disaster and there was a lot of overspray. And so I'm painting it blue. So that's, that's it. That's the whole reason. And the reason for the blue heart, and I guess the blue for the rest of it is Artendale. Well, the, the school's colors are two different shades of blue. And so it's very on theme, I think. And also our mascot is an otter and otters are brown. And so look at that. Isn't that just adorable? I, it is in fact adorable. And I am completely obsessed with airbrushing bath bombs at this point. I normally don't ever make the bath bombs. I make the apprentices do them. But right now I can't stop you guys. I am making the bath bombs and I'm airbrushing the bath bombs and I'm in love with this entire process. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, so all things considered, it totally worked and that's totally awesome. Obviously the downside of this would be the fact that that guy's so small and so you're always having to refill the chamber there to really do it all. So obviously like a proper airbrushing system would be better, but I don't have one of those guys. I have this and why buy a second thing if I already have this one and all I have to do is put a bigger thing on and I can totally do that. That's easy peasy. We're talking mini funnel with the thing. Just tape it on. It'll be great. Yeah. And all the colors and everything I already have too. So also why would I buy an airbrush system? Because I have micas and rubbing alcohol and glycerin and I know how to use them. Sounded a little bit threatening. But yeah, so this was fun. This was actually a really cool idea and I'm 100% here for it. So if you have one of these guys lying around and you've been wanting to try your hand out at airbrushing things, use this you're never going to use it on your face again and even if you do micas are cosmetics and so it's all good this is my thinking but yeah those were a ton of fun and i really do love them and i know the teachers are going to love them i don't know if i'm going to be introducing these to the website so i don't know if i'm going to put them over at soapandclay.com but be on the lookout for lots of differently airbrushed you know designs and stuff because I have a use for this thing finally, so I want to play. Yes, there's that. If you're interested in subscribing, hey, subscribe. Cool, awesome. For those of you who have subscribed, hey, you are actually cool and awesome. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here and being a Sudzer and existing and all of the things. And I'm gonna go paint some more bath bombs because I am actually a little bit addicted at this point. So I'm gonna go start working on my Christmas line. Yes. But I'll see all of you guys again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.